he needs to have a flight disc. He needs to be able to go, oh yes, it's a flight disc. Oh, I'm going to push E. When I push E, it needs to it needs to zoom out. Maybe we look at our view and, and then like as the ship turns, you know, and then we can fly it. So this is my my dream, and then we can go eat some asteroids. Nom, 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 nom. Hi, I'm Tom Lees, and I'm making a space factory game called The Recall Singularity, where you get to build factories in space. Join me tonight as I show you a breakdown of the streams that I've been doing. I thought, what a great and painless way to not only develop at the same time socially, but actually uh, share what I've been up to. In this one, I've just got the, the setup for these rocks. This is what they look like with iron ore on them. With nickel ore on them. Uh, cobalt. Uh, ice. We've got rocks. A rock scene. So when you open the rocks file in Godot, it creates this. I've done this. I've gone to each one of these. If you look at the material on the right-hand side here, and I'll place myself in a nice position so you can see. Um, so we're in the material. Um, the norm is really essential. So we'll put that in. And so if I grab this light and move it now, you shouldn't be able to see the triangles and the lighting. Well, you can kind of hear. So this is my current experiment scene. Um, and I've got three classes that Godot knows about. We've got four tiles, ship link, and star world link. Okay, it's so much fun I can't stop doing it. Anyway, I went on to refactor the networking from the existing UDP library I was using to another one called Laminar. Now what my past self doesn't yet know is unfortunately this didn't work out. Some terrible networking library that's made of dark powers. So what it does is it sends um, uh, reliable messages, unreliable messages, um, both, um, it can handle multiple streams, uh, it does all the retries, um, it can also throw away packet. Maybe I could just use it and then write my own stuff on top of it. Four, I've got, this one's called SG Core, this one's called SG Net, this SG stands for space game, uh, of course. The network knows enough about the simulation to create it and to feed feed messages through um, and no one else knows about the network apart from SGNet and then SG Core, which is the go dot initialization stuff we create a we create a world called space world ID which is always ID zero and then with that world we add two spaceships at the two locations um, minus 18 minus 18 and minus 18 5 X and Y um, Compiling, I'll queue up, um, oops, that's the wrong one, I tried to run the server again, that's not going to work. Uh, let's run the client. Oh, it didn't compile. I must have malformed something. Process message. It's a massage. I wouldn't want to process a massage, I'm more likely to want to process a message. Why do I want to process a massage? And we're good to go, and it's saying not too much. Oh, oh, I see, we lost our connection when I selected the box and things timed out. Connection's not working. Oh, these ones, uh, those shapes are mostly like ASCII art versions of the ship layouts. And they come from Production Floor, which is a class that manages the um, ship layout. There's this this fu function here, render to string. And we call this Production Floor wall character to find one of the walls. And here's all the different kinds of walls you can have. And so that's where the, basically we're just drawing the grid of the ship from the top left down to the bottom. For each part of the wall, we write out the relevant character. So we've got a case statement on the outside for which kind of wall we've got. And then each kind of wall has its own symbol. We have adjust floor. Adjust floor understands how to add and remove walls. And for testing it, uh, naturally I have unit tests. And the unit tests call assert floor patterns. They do a couple of operations and then they check that the room renders like this. Or like this or like that. So the rendering that you see, this rendering, um, I did it for unit tests. And um, a set floor pattern just goes through each of the actions and knows how to um, call them on the on the world. And then it gets the, the string for the world and it checks that the strings match. So that's how that works. And if it doesn't work, um, if the floors don't match, I take out this part here where it's adding a module for instance 
and then I run the tests. So you see lots of tests have failed. Um, <clears throat> so for instance, this test, it expected to see the map on the right hand side, which has walls in it, but instead it saw the map on the left hand side, which has no walls in it. Okay, so <clears throat> here I am again with my client, going to build some more floor. Okay, so building this caused the same problem. So it caused the client to drop out. And actually, if you look at this, you'll see that the server sending a lot more messages than the client. Like most of the time, the client's completely silent. I don't see any messages from the client to the server for a long time. So I've been wondering, I've been tossing up the idea of undoing all the refactoring we did. Um, remember how we changed from Cobalt to Laminar? And that took, well, basically three nights, um, which is like a week. Um, and now I'm wondering if maybe that was the right choice or not. Uh, huh. I think we can just say, look, we can always go back. It's good. <clears throat> All these commits. Official, unofficial, we're switching back to COBOL. Uh, it's very painful to do this. Check out master. Two games. And we're going to build a desk. And we're going to build some floor. And everything's drifting. Oh, that's something I forgot. Yes. So, because the sink is now working, you're seeing the plane, the, the ship's drifting again. As you should. We're going to stick with this for now. So, um, I've got this function called start client. And it's really not that surprising. It, it sets a, something called an atomic variable, which is for communicating between threads. And then, it's like a static boolean. And it sets it to true, so we want the client to run. And then we create a new thread, and in that thread we call the function called run client. So this function down here is called, it's in its own thread, and it starts running, and at this point here it's processing ticks in a loop, round and round and round. Now because of the way um, Cobalt works, it's taking care of that sleep sticks, as it calls client process incoming, and it passes it a mutable, se a mutable sector. So what's going on here is that we've got an infinite loop, and in this infinite loop we do ticks, uh, as long as client live stays true. So as soon as the, the other thread says, client, please die, it will stop looping here and it will quit. And then the thread will quit and everything will be nice and tidy. Um, inside this loop and inside these curly braces, we open a variable called sector. And we get something called get singleton sector. Now if you look at this, at, at the singleton sector. So remember, se sector is my globals. So all the entire simulation for my game is in this object called sector, which is like an area of space. We have this global sector here, which is a mutex containing a box, which is a pointer, to a sector. Okay, so the singleton has a global sector, and in the client what we do is every tick, we lock the entire sector, we take all the incoming packets and process them against the sector, then we tell the sector to update, and then we create a list of all the packets we want to send um, to, to the server, because this is a client. But on the client on the on the server, we we call similar a similar routine here. Send outgoing. It goes through every possible client and takes care of all of their messages at once. We could probably do something more intelligent. Now, do tick actually does multiple ticks. It figures out internally um, how far we have to go to catch up with with the server. But that's a whole other thing. Now, I'm wondering if we want to take this loop here, the idea of this loop here and somehow move it into the go dot thread. So we're gonna have a physics process. It's gonna happen 60 frames a second. It's gonna to need to um, poll, poll the network, update the world. So the new function, um, do tick, and we're going to put a sector in in a second. So this function takes the sector. It's not exactly good, but you know, it's good enough. I need to start editing some videos that show this stuff off at some point as well and get more active that way. Okay, so my favorite uh, approach to help me dive into the blue yonder of like changing a bunch of stuff is to make sure that my git is clean and ready. That's when um, we get told. So I've got a function here called start client. So that, that at the moment 
spawns a thread for the client but we're not going to do it that way we're going to um, do it here in this class but what we can do now is we can add a fixed time step function so um, we're going to export a function so that it's called physics process so here's an example one that was from some example project for a spinning cube okay so when it when this is called it's called at 60 frames a second when we tick we need a copy of the sector this is interesting now this is starting to get interesting we can move the sector so that it is owned by star world link and that is the exact reason why i've gone to all this trouble i want to move away from a singleton one i want to move to one that's owned by this i want the star world link to um, contain the sector but star world link is not the only class known to godot that has to interact with the sector ship link also has to interact with the sector and ship link doesn't really i don't really have a very concrete way of accessing the instance of star world link from the instance of ship link i don't have a way of asking godot for a pointer to it or of um i, I could i could do it by going to nodes and casting but i'm not sure if that would actually give me a rust pointer to it um so i can call functions in it through godot but i can't like call them each other through rust which means i need some back door which is what the static data is for any singleton I do create is only going to be used access from the one thread, which makes mutexes very cheap. So right this moment, I'm not going to worry about this issue. We're going to leave the ownership of the sector. We're going to leave that as a singleton for now. But we know that we're no longer accessing that from multiple threads. We're always accessing it from the same thread. Um, and we're using our mutex to do it. Yeah. At some point, I will come up with a better idea. And when I do, I'll let you know. Because ship link at the moment has process, update, add, export. This build module, you tell the ship you want to build a module. Edit floor, you want to edit the floor. I'm just What a pretty picture of my own face over here. It's nice to see that it's still working. Oh, this is not so good. That's not what I hope to see. I think that's important. To not get too caught up in making things perfect because as long as the right thing right tests are in place it's easy enough for us to go back and forward in time and and wow that ship is really moving and it's moving through space because in in the um rust physics i had the initialization which moved it so in case you missed that part the part where i stopped it moving that was part of the git git repository so oh that's beautiful by the way this this gap here is actually expected behavior there's there's a wall tile i haven't rendered yet which describes like has internal floor on both sides and it's specifically rendered as a different as a different image in this little world here because it doesn't exist we can't render it yeah all the machines are sucked into space <laughs> totally don't worry it's it's just because the, the, the hole in the floor is too narrow so if i delete some floors so that it's now two tiles wide you get these funky corners that's really glamorous again another problem two walls back to back that's also a special tile I'm using a different kind for that once you make it big enough it looks beautiful so you know usually when that happens I very quickly like draw some more deletions there's just it's a work in progress okay right I try not to get too, I try not to get too overwhelmed by all the different things that need to be done it's okay it really is it's like there's a conversation I was having earlier where we're talking about how games have holes in them until they don't and then suddenly um, everything falls into place and it's fun to play and i mean i'm already having fun just building you know just being able to put a scoop in and then build some conveyors like it's actually pretty fun just to do this right and have a refinery and have some more conveyors and see all the ingots come out you know i think that's pretty cool myself and then we can like hover over it and you can see you know that it's a refinery it doesn't tell us what its contents are yet mm. this um physics moving has to update the cursor's position it's not doing that yet you see there's little things i need to worry about i'm trying to worry about one thing at a time anyway i'm getting distracted again thank you that's a really good point these are all minor things the most important is gameplay and the most important thing to gameplay is allowing um, this little guy um, who I can move using my cursor keys um, I need to synchronize him to the network um, when I've done that he needs to have a flight disk he needs to be able to go 
Oh, yes, it's a flight disc. Oh, I'm going to push E. When I push E, it needs to, it needs to zoom out. We, we look at our view. And then, like, uh, the ship turns, you know. And then we can fly it. So this is my, my dream. And then we can go eat some asteroids. Nom, 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 nom. And, I mean, you know, whatever the hell's going on over here needs to be fixed. But, I mean, this is going to be so cool. This game's going to be so cool. So that's um that's no longer in a thread. So if you hadn't if you've missed this, we're now updating the network from a physics thread as opposed to updating it from some sort of client thread, which means the sector is always belonging to the D. Go dot is always in the go dot world. Um Where Constructors asking if I paper tested this game. I have decided that my 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 game is too much like clockwork and my concerns are not about the I'm not concerned I can make the game fun. So we constructed a conversation with me on Discord recently where he said he was concerned about making a fun game and I said if you're worried about making, about making a fun game that has all the right rules and that works make it work on paper. My concerns are not that I can make a fun game. I am not concerned about that right now. I am highly convinced that I can make a factory game in space it's fun. Um I don't know exactly how yet. The things that are bothering me are, are technical problems. I need to make a multiplayer game. I need to be able to make um, a clockwork lockstep world and also an action game at the same time um, and actually make it work. I love coding. To be honest, I'm doing this for the fun of it. <laughs> like, I'm having a good time right now. Totally through all these bugs. Um, so, you've just watched me struggle with a port to Cobalt, which didn't quite work out, but at least in the end I managed to move all my network code into the Godot thread. So what's cool about ma managing it from the Godot thread? Now it's pretty trivial to say, okay, we've got a copy of the sector, the network is not touching it, and the very next thing I did over the course of subsequent streams was to add an action that took the player's input, that if you want to watch that, you probably need to catch up with the next YouTube video. If you want to learn more about the game that I'm making, just Google for the Recall Singularity. You'll find plenty of things, from blog posts to Twitter posts, even a story. I'm all over Reddit. My Reddit and Twitter and Twitch usernames are all Recall Singularity, and I'd love to have you on board. Our Discord server is full of people developing games, and so if that's what you're interested in, please join up, and we can inspire you to do it yourself. It was nice. I hope you enjoyed watching, um, and catch you on the next video. So now I'm going to make sure I click the stop recording.